This conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. Here is Marcella. I am a senior bioinformatician at the Sanger Institute. I work in the Darwin Tree of Life project. Our project is sequencing the genomes of all of the eukaryotic species in Britain and Ireland to yield data for studies in biodiversity, evolution and conservation. We have a big challenge as we are scaling up to sequence over 60,000 species at the same time that we test the latest sequencing technologies and assembly strategies to yield the best genomes for the species. I want to present to you today the Red Admiral Butterfly Vanessa Atalanta genome. It was sequenced with PecBio HiFi reads and scaffolded with HiC data. As you can see, by the heat map of the high C, the structure of the genome is very well assembled. It was assembled to the expected genome size, scaffold N50 is 12 megabases, and it has very few gaps on it. However, one question that we still had with the PecBio HiFi assemblies was whether we needed to polish it or not. We know from the structure it's very well assembled, but how is it in terms of the quality value per base of the assembly? Do we need polishing? Do we need PEC bio CCS polishing? Or do we need Illumina polishing? So I have been evaluating the QV of this assembly and also other Lepidopteran. We have two ways of evaluating QV. We have a mapping based QV approach where we basically map chromium 10 x Illumina reads back to the specific haplotypes of the assembly. So all of the differences between the reads mapped in the reference, we consider it to be an error because we are haplotype specific, specifically mapping. Or we can have a mapping free k mer uh, based, shared k mer based approach, which basically compares the shared k mers between the high quality Illumina reads and the k mers present in the assembly. This is good because this avoids the mapping biases, especially the biases that can happen in mapping of repetitive regions. So without any polishing, Vanessa Atalanta genome had already very high QV scores. The mapping QV is FRED based. So a QV of 48, it means that the assembly was more than 99.99% accurate in relation to the Illumina reads. And the mercury QV is also really high, it's 56. And the boost codes are almost complete. As soon as we applied one round of Illumina polishing though, we have even higher uh, QV scores and even higher Busco score. If we do one round of PEC biopolishing, we don't see any changes in the mercury QV. Uh, the mapping QV goes slightly higher too, and the Busco score also goes higher. If we do a PEC bio round of polishing, then an Illumina round of polishing, we see mapping QV going higher, the mercury QV not changing in relation to the unpolished, and Busco's also go a little higher. So taking these results into consideration, we have got to a few conclusions. Back bio hi-fi assemblies are already very high accurate. They have a very high accuracy, even without any polishing, which is really good. Uh, we have decided not to use PEC biopolishing for now, as it hasn't changed substantially the QVs, and collaborators have been seeing that Raccoon maybe has been decreasing the QV on repetitive regions of the human genome, especially the nucleotide regions. So we need to investigate these genomes more in this context, but we are avoiding PEC bio raccoon polishing for now. So with our results, we have decided to go with PEC one round of Illumina polishing which increases the QV in the Busco scores, and it's not a very costly uh, step in terms of um, uh, for such a small genome, such as the Lepidopteran that we have been working on. So our approach for now, for the 18 Lepidoptera genomes that we have been able to de generate data for just before the COVID-19 crisis strike, uh, it uses this technologies and this set of softwares. So we are sequencing, we have sequencing it with PEC bio hi fi reads. Uh, we are polishing it with Illumina linked reads, Chromium 10x read, and finally scaffolding it with the high C reads, which come from Kia Jing or Arima. And using the set of softwares, high canoe, and then we separate haplotypes with perch dupes. Then we map all of the Illumina reads back with Long Ranger and then call consensus with Freebase. And finally, we scaffold it with the Salsa software. 
If you want to see this data and more data that we have been producing, we have this website where you can find all of the data and all of the assemblies and can play with them. As soon as the assemblies are manually curated, they will be also available in the official um, genome databases. But for now, you can go right now into this website and access the data. I want to thank you all for listening and I want to thank all of my colleagues and collaborators in this project at the Sanger Institute and associated institutes. And especially, I want to thank Shane McCarthy, my manager, with whom I talk genomes in a daily basis. Thank you very much.